The religion of Al-Islam has always appealed to the poor, the weak, the oppressed, the people who come from the lower tiers of society. As when Hiraqal and Abu Sufyan had the conversation, Hiraqal, he asked Abu Sufyan, أَشْرَفَ النَّاسِ يَتَّبِعُهُ أَمْ دُعَفَاءُهُ قَالَ أَبُو سُفْيَانَ دُعَفَاءُهُ قَالَ هِرَقُلْ فَهُمْ أَتْبَعَهُ So Hiraqul, the emperor of Rome, he asked Abu Sufyan, who was not a Muslim at the time that this happened, he said, asking him questions about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, does the most affluent of people follow him? The rich, the affluent, the people who come from the upper tiers of society, do they follow him? Or is it the du'afa, the weak and the oppressed and the marginalized population of society? So Abu Sufyan said, no, it's the weak and the oppressed and the marginalized population. In Hiraqul, he said, وَهُمْ أَتْبَعَ الرُّسُلُ Because they are always the followers of the prophets and messengers. They are always the followers of the prophets and messengers. However, this poses a problem for people who come from the upper tiers of society. Because now it puts them at a place where they have to be leveled. And it has to make people who come from nothing equal with people who come from something. And that's the beauty of the religion of Al-Islam. That before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are all equal. Except with taqwa. And this posed a problem to some of the chiefs of Quraysh. Because they couldn't find themselves, find it in themselves to follow a religion that appeals and attracts the weak and the oppressed and the people that they keep their, their foots on their necks. There's no way that we can follow that religion. Some of the chiefs of Quraysh, they came to the Prophet and they said, In sarraka an nattabi'ak fatrud fulan wa fulan wa fulan ya'ni min du'afa' al-nas. They came to the Prophet ﷺ and they said, if you want us to follow you, the rich, the wealthy, from prestigious tribes, if you want us to follow you, then you have to get rid of this one and this one and this one who come from, from nothing. This marginalized population, you have to get rid of them. The same thing you find going on today in, in Islam. And you go into many countries, many societies, where Islam is the dom dominant population, you will find that the weak and the oppressed, they are the ones that are marginalized, they are ignored, they have no voice. The same thing goes on here in America. The marginalized population, they don't have a voice, they're not even seen as the face of Islam. When they are the face of Islam, because they use the religion for survival, while the rich and the affluent, they use the religion for convenience. If I have the day off, I'll go to Jumu'ah. Whereas the people who use the religion for survival, they have to go to Jumu'ah. Because that is my lifeline. That is what gives my soul. That is what replenishes my Iman. I have to go to Jumu'ah. I have to go to Saul. Whereas people who come from the upper tiers of society, they look at the religion as a convenience. If I have it in my schedule, I'll go. And these people are the, always the face of Islam. However, they are the voiceless. So they came to the Prophet ﷺ and said that if you want us to follow you, then you have to get rid of this one and this one and this one. We're not going to follow a religion and you have these people around you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a verse from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet ﷺ, وَلَا تَتُرُدِ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيهِ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهًا Do not toss away or throw away or chase away those who call on their Lord night and day, yuriduna wajha, only desiring the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't throw them away. Don't ignore them. Don't marginalize them. Ma alayka min hisabihim min shay'in, wa la min hisabihim alayka min shay'in, fatadrudahum, fatakuna min al-zalimeen. You have no recourse with their end result, and they have no recourse with your end result. And if you reject them and if you push them away, you will be from amongst those who are oppressive. Because these people are always the followers of the prophets and messengers. Many of these people became the scholars of Islam. 
the scholars of Islam during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in each and every generation has always come from the vast majority of them have always come from the weak and the oppressed and the, the marginalized population I can go through scholar and I mean this is even as it relates to the Sahaba and the ayat that I just mentioned which is found in Surah An'am, Surah number 6 in the Quran it was revealed about six companions they were referring to six people one of them was Bilal ibn Abi Rabah, an African slave. And no, we're not going to follow a religion. You have this slave following, following you around. We're not going to follow you too. Suhaib ibn Sinan of Rumi. Mikdad ibn Aswad, who was also an African slave. Mikdad ibn Aswad. Ammar ibn Yasir, whose mother Sumayya was the first martyr in Islam, who was also black, who was also African slaves, who converted to Islam. We're not going to follow a religion and you have these people following behind you. And in our society, we consider them to be no one. We consider them to be less than. We're not going to follow you if you have these people around you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonished the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa don't chase these people away. Because these people are always the followers of the prophets and messengers. Always. And you fast forward till today and you see people coming into Islam from this same marginalized population and some people they become uncomfortable in the salat someone's trying to put his foot next to yours and maybe his socks are dirty maybe they smell and you move your foot away maybe the person smells of cigarettes or smells or reeks of this or that and you feel uncomfortable but we should embrace this because these are people who come with sincerity they came into the religion for no other reason other than desiring the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the scholars of the Tabi'un, the second generation after Islam, his name was Muhammad ibn Sirin, one of the most prominent scholars from amongst the Tabi'un, also was a, who was a slave. His mother was a slave who belonged to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and he eventually freed her. And his father was a slave who belonged to Anas ibn Malik, who was one of the companions of the Prophet and he eventually freed her. And those two got married, and they produced a son, Muhammad ibn Sirin, who eventually became one of the most prominent scholars from the Tabi'un. Muhammad ibn Sirin, his mother said to him, his mother's name was Sumayya, she said to him, she said, Ya Bunay, innaka satakunu fi majlis al-qawm madhuk minka wal maskhoor bika she said, oh my son, listen to this piece of advice of a slave woman, ex-slave to her son. So that he doesn't have to worry about being a part of that marginalized population. I'm going to give you something that is going to equalize you with the rest of society. It's not money, it's not children, it's not status. One thing. And one thing only that, mar that, that equalizes everything and everyone, and that is knowledge of this deen. She said, oh my son, in most circles, you are going to be the laughing stock. Madhuk minka. You are going to be the laughing stock. And people are going to mock you because of where you come from. She said, but I command you, I order you, I instruct you, to seek knowledge of this deen. For in the yarfa'uk, for this knowledge of this deen will raise you in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the eyes of the people. This is the only religion out of all other religions where a person can come from nothing and ascend to prominence through knowledge and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says in the Quran, Yarafa'illahu alladheena amanu minkum walladheena utul ilma darajat that Allah will raise those from amongst you who have faith and those from amongst you who have been given knowledge in degrees. This is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowledge will raise you and will equalize you with everyone else in society. One of the tabi'un, his name was Atta ibn Abi Rabah, also an African slave who was freed. And he rose to prominence in Islam to the point where 
even some of the leaders of Islam had to come and humble themselves at his feet. One of the scholars of the past, Al-Harabi, is Haq uh, Al-Harabi. He said, Ata kana abdim aswad kana anfuhu kabaki la. He said that Ata ibn Abi Rabah was a black African slave who had a nose like a, a bean. And the tips of his fingers used to curl over. But kana a'war, and he only had one eye. And he used to walk with a limp. But he was one of the scholars of Islam. Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, one of the leaders or the, the Amirs of Bani Umayyah. He was taken to his two sons to go make Hajj. However, he didn't have knowledge about how to make Hajj. So when he got to Mecca, he had no other recourse but to go to Atta ibn Abi Rabah to ask him about the matters of Hajj. When he got to the Haram in Mecca, Atta was making his prayer. So Sulaiman and his two sons, this is the leader of the Muslims, had to sit down and wait until he finished praying. And when he finished praying, Atta, he turned around and he sat with them. And they began to ask him question after question after question until Atta couldn't really stand the amount of questions and he turned his back towards them. How are you the leader of the Muslims and you don't even know the basics of Hajj? So he got tired of answering his questions and he turned his back to him. So Suleiman, he turned to his sons and he said, Kuma, stand up and let's go. So they got up and they walked away. And Suleiman, he turned to his two sons and he said, La tansa dhulana amama hadha abdun habashiyu. He said, Ya bunaya. He said, oh my two sons. La taniya fil ilm. Don't ever forget to seek knowledge of this religion. He said, because I will never forget the humiliation that I experience at the feet of this African slave. I will never forget that. That I had to humble myself because I didn't have knowledge before someone that I would have never humbled myself in front of except for the fact that he had knowledge. And he told his sons, don't ever neglect the knowledge of this religion because I will never forget the humiliation that I had to experience at the feet of that African slave asking him question and question and question about the religion because I failed to seek knowledge of my team. And this is what Umar anhu, he said that the Prophet Wasallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise in Allah yarfa' bihad al-kitab that Allah will raise with the Quran some people and he will humiliate other people. Whoever gains knowledge of this deen will rise to prominence and whoever fails to gain knowledge of this deen will always be in a humble situation because you will always be forced to ask other people about how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.